Good morning and uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Mike Dillon and I am uh, Vice President of Business Development uh, at Sierra Wall & Company. On behalf of Sierra Wall, Foothills Industrial Products, and Pietro Fiorentini, we would like to uh, welcome you all to this webinar. We'll begin with some introductions and a brief preamble. I'll begin introducing your host, starting with Sierra Wall. Sierra Wall was established in 1981, headquartered in Cambridge, Ontario, and have more than 40 product lines represented and distributed. And for those of guests that are not aware, we have some exciting news. On March 11th of this year, Sierra Wall acquired Foothills Industrial Products. Foothills has been serving the natural gas industry for more than 65 years based in Calgary. Together, we're 28 people strong with distribution centers in Calgary and Cambridge. Foothills and CR Wall together are your national distributor for Pietro Fiorentine products. And now our special guest co-hosts and presenters from Pietro Fiorentini. For those that uh, don't know, Pietro Fiorentini is based in Milan, Italy. They're a 75 year old family owned business with 20 plus global sales offices, nine factories and 1400 employees. The focus of today's webinar, the FE and FEX regulators are now manufactured in their newest plant in West Virginia, USA. PF Core Technologies. PF regulators cover the full range from three quarter to 12 inches, ANSI 125 all the way to ANSI 600. And core to the regulator design and manufacture is that they are drop-in replacements for most most standard North American regulators are balanced valve design, shall incorporate single orifice for each size, lowest differential pressure for application, supported by in-house manufacture of all diaphragms, are hydrogen ready up to 20% and all have integral slam shut option. And now I'll introduce today's presenters and panelists. With us is Carlos Uribe uh, from sunny uh, Florida. He's sales manager for North America and he's been in the industry for uh, 28 years. Also our uh, panelist, Federico uh, Venin. Federico is based in Italy. He's the sales manager for the Americas, has four years in the gas industry and is joined by Armando Amadini, technical product manager with 28 years experience and a definitely a subject matter expert. Thank you all for being here today. To all of our online guests, Please be aware that there's a QA feature provided and it's located at the lower portion of your display. I'm sure we all have uh, countless Zoom experiences now over the last few months. This will allow you to input your questions and have them reviewed and answered. Sorry, and have them reviewed and answered by our facilitators, panelists and subject matter experts in real time. We'll do our best to address each in real time. However, there may be some delay. What is the purpose of today's webinar? Well, the context is have you ever. It's to frame our discussion around safety, efficiencies, and revenue production, protection. Have you ever encountered issues with installing or relocating meter sets due to clearance issues related to building openings, intakes, or exhausts? And ultimately then having to deal with unhappy builders, property owners due to less than ideal, even unsightly vent lines and meter set locations. Have you ever experienced overpressure safety concerns or overpressure events on your services? I know overpressure protection must be top of mind for all of us. Have you ever dealt with a catastrophic failure of customer piping or worse, a fire fed by the gas service? Potential for blowing gas after the meter set inside the customer property must be avoided. Have you ever experienced an incorrect selection or replacement of a regulator orifice set up with the wrong capacity to support the load? This can be especially consequential in a pressure factor management or PFM installation. Orifice selection is one of the more, is one more opportunity, pardon me, for human error. Have you ever wished you had a regulator to cover a large range of capacities, resulting in improved efficiencies and lower cost of ownership? Look, I know we're all working towards simplifying our systems and taking cost out. Let's take a look at some of those challenging applications. Venting your openings. I see numerous issues here. 
ground clearance, splash is issue or snow load risk from above, health and safety issues for the installer working from a ladder, aesthetics. I know as a homeowner, I would not be happy with many of these. Zero lot lines in architectural design without utility considerations make venting nearly impossible in some situations. All of these are workarounds have a cost or unintended consequence. Venting and indoor meter installations. Well, it's common to install meter sets outdoors wherever possible. That is not always the option, of course. How to address moisture drain. Threaded connections everywhere, inside. Risk of damage to meter set and piping by property owner. Safety, construction costs, and efficiencies are not optimized here. Where do you install the meter set? There we go. Where do you install the meter set? Look, especially challenging in high density urban environments. Several of our, our large and older cities have this issue. Zero lot line, zero frontage. Vertical subdivisions. These are often some of the most challenging applications to vent. What, solutions? Some of them, curb boxes, non-standard vent line design. We've seen some of those on the earlier slides. Unfortunate aesthetics, often resulting in unhappy uh, property owners as a result. Our purpose today is to discuss how to better address these challenges. With that, I will turn this over to uh, Carlos Uribe with uh, Pietro Fiorentini. And like I mentioned, Carlos is uh, probably sitting on his deck sunning in uh, sunny Florida right now. One quick reminder, I just encourage you to use your QA feature at the, uh, the, the uh, lower section of your uh, displays. And again, we'll do our best to, uh, to answer these in real time. Carlos, I'm turning this over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, first of all, I hope everyone is safe and healthy. Um, I want to thank everyone for participating in this discussion today and for giving us an opportunity to present our FE line of pressure regulators for residential and commercial applications. The FE family of overpressure shutoff, also known as OPSO or OPCO pressure regulators, was first introduced to the European market over 30 years ago. At that time, there was an initiative to reduce emissions of greenhouse gases and the use of full capacity relief regulators was eradicated. In this lineup of service regulators, there are two distinct formats, FE and FEX models, with flow rates capacities ranging from 875 cubic feet an hour up to 3,500 cubic feet an hour. These regulators are available in several configurations. Opco device is standard for all models, and options of under pressure shutoff or OPSO, excess flow valve or EFV, as well as a thermal shutoff valve are available. OLFE and FEX regulators are supplied with a 300 micron filter strainer installed at the inlet just before the OPSO valve. Additionally, a safety diaphragm is provided on the second stage as an internal vent limiter. FE regulator is certified under CSA 16, 618 service regulators for natural gas. What's unique about this FE technology is that it's a two-stage regulator with a fully balanced valve that allows for a single orifice to be used for each model through the complete inlet pressure range. It provides optional and inlet and outlet test ports for field verification during installation and or for later date inspection if required. FE is available in single and dual outlet connections to adapt to individual or multiple meter set piping arrangements. Last but not least, an underground version for below grade installation in curb meter boxes or in areas that are prone to flooding. Additionally, I just wanna point out something that is becoming uh, of very high importance these days, uh, discussions going out throughout the industry. These FE regulators are hydrogen ready for up to 20% blend. 
The two-stage design and balance stream offers several major benefits in operation and safety. First, the dual-stage pressure cut gives you PFM accuracy across the full range of inlet pressure by greatly eliminating any effect from system pressure changes, for example, from winter to summer, day of the week, or from day to night. Tight pressure control with minimum droop is achieved due to the fact that the second stage is at all times operating with constant differential pressure. For the FE25 model, as an example, it's approximately three pounds above outlet pressure. Second, the safety diaphragm serves as a vent limiter. Therefore, in case of working diaphragm failure, it will limit the volume of gas vented to less than one cubic foot an hour. By contrast, Standard internal relief valve regulators may vent in case of catastrophic failure up to 500 times more volume of gas. There is an intrinsic safety factor built into a, an OPSO regulator design. However, with the addition of the safety diaphragm, the level of safety is greatly enhanced. Dual stage design also allows for the use of a single orifice, eliminating the possibility of user installing or selecting an orifice that may not meet the pressure or flow rate requirements. One single FE regulator can safely operate a wide range of inlet pressures up to 125 pounds. An OPCO device is standard on all FE and FEX models. Compared to a full capacity IRV regulator, OPSO regulators do offer key and valuable flexibility to gas operators. They allow gas utilities to deal with challenges present on a daily basis while identifying acceptable meter set locations to meet codes and regulations for minimum clearance requirements to sources of ignitions and build openings, openings into a building. Where code allows, FE regulators will give the gas company options for reducing clearances which are not available to them when installing a full IRB pressure regulator. No doubt the FE OPCO regulator does provide enhanced safety and security by protecting the house line and property of the gas customer from any overpressure event. Furthermore, it does eliminate or largely reduces the elevated cost of installing a vent line in both indoor and outdoor applications. Unsightly vent lines are a point of guts, customer dissatisfaction, and perforating an exterior wall for a vent line can also be a liability concern for any utility. The full lineup of FE pressure regulators is comprised of the FE25, FE50, FE75, and FE100 models. The dual stage design guarantees high capacity at very low inlet pressure, while being able to operate also at maximum rate inlet pressure. Connection sizes are available in a wide variety of configurations to meet any customer meter set designs. As an example, you can get your reg FE regulator with a three quarter by three quarter connection, three quarter by one, and more. For larger capacities, we have the options also of a two by two uh, threaded connection. FE comes in two models, BP and HP versions. For most applications in residential and light commercial um, meter sets, the low pressure version can cover a wide range of operating pressures from in five inches water column up to 2.6 pounds. Ambient temperature rating for the FE regulator ranges from minus 40 up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. This flow curve for an FE25 pressure regulator showcases the ability of this regulator to control downstream pressure with less than one inch water column droop inside the full range of inlet pressure up to the maximum flow rate capacity. In short, inlet pressure variation has no impact in the operation. With a single orifice per model, you can handle uh, several meter sizes 
uh, class of 50, 425, 630, and 800 classes meters. In the scatterway diagrams, we can see the two stage pressure reduction. At the inlet in red color, the gas will first go through the strainer, stopping any debris from coming, uh, coming from the service line that would otherwise impair the OPSO device from operating or the ability to achieve bottle, bubble tight shutoff. All OPSO devices are manual reset. In the case of the FE and FEX reg regulators, resetting is done by pulling on a knob that is protected by a dust cup cap that is also ser serves as a tool to facilitate rearming operation. On the right drawing, we can see the dual diaphragm design, a working diaphragm that is sensing downstream pressure and above it, the safety diaphragm that will limit venting of gas in case of diaphragm failure. On this next slide, we can see a close up of the two independent OPSO and OPSO devices, each with their own rearming mechanism. There is a second orifice and a soft seat attached to the second stage that the shot off. Uh, that will shut off flow in case of unsafe drop on, of downstream pressure or flow exceeding 100% of nominal capacity. Here's another slide, again showing a close up of the um, OPSO device and how it's connected to the lever that is driven by the a working diaphragm. There is an optio optional um, automatic rearm mechanism for the under pressure shutoff that allows a small bleed by to build up pressure down in the downstream house line and uh, allow the regulator to go back into service. The FE regulator can also be installed in any position and flow direction. I'm sorry, I, I need to go back. Where code may allow installing installation of a regulator indoors without running a vent line to outside, the FE regulator can be fitted with a very small diameter vent line. Option and second stage diaphragm cases can be teed up together, allowing a single vent line to be used to vent to outside. Here we see two examples of a three quarter, a three eighths of an inch tubing uh, for short vent lines and half an inch uh, pipe for uh, longer vent line uh, requirements. A few regulars can be installed in any position and in any flow direction. This gives utilities flexibility to use whatever meter design works best for them. Due to the compact design and op option to install in any position, FE OPSO regulars can be installed inside small meter boxes. This is common practice in several cities across North America and more or less the standard in all other places of the world. In fact, most utilities choose to install the regulator directly to the inlet of the gas meter, reducing the number of threaded connections, having a significant impact in the re reduction of fugitive emissions. Once again, here a compact design that allows the installation of the EFE regulator in a curb box below grade. A real need for many old cities and towns where meter set locations is truly a challenge for a gas utility. Here we see an example of an underground version of the EFE regulator. Uh, the specific model that is used below grade has uh, special protective coatings to prevent corrosion. Uh, the way that it operates is by installing on the vent connection uh, a bell that allows the regulator to breathe and have reference to atmosphere. Uh, in case of flooding, of course, the regulator will be submerged underwater, but the bell will trap air, allowing the regulator to continue to operate and prevent water from ingressing into the diaphragm case. As we said before, there's also the option of the thermal shutoff valve 
this option will, uh, this valve will shut off flow of gas at the inlet in case of high temperature, uh, preventing uh, flammable gases to be feeding the fire. As explained before, FE regulators can uh, be uh, installed with a vent line where companies practice may require to do so or regulation, regulations or codes do not allow for an installation or a regulator without a vent line. Uh, you can run very uh, long vent lines without any increase in pipe diameter uh, with a three, this number is wrong, with a three eighths of an inch uh, OD tubing, you can run it up to 35 feet without any uh, detriment to performance. This will result in lower material costs for the utility, ease of handling, ease of mounting, and better aesthetics. Here's a partial list of uh, some of the uh, companies, utilities in the North America that have approved and uh, use the FE pressure regulator on a daily basis. Many of these names may, may be familiar to you. Uh, some are Canadian companies, uh, majority of them are US companies. Um, most are, you know, some of the largest utilities uh, in terms of number of customers they serve. Hey, uh, Carlos, it's Mike Dillon. We have a question. How can you explain the set point for the pressure on the uh, excess flow valve feature? How is that low pressure set point configured or, or adjusted? So or, or the FE, yeah, so, the, so there's two, two um, different uh, models, as I said before, the FE and the FEX, uh, and they work uh, differently, in fact. On the FE models, which are the 25 and 50, 875 and 1500 feet an hour, the OPSO or the uh, under pressure shut off works similarly to an excess flow valve. So as the, as the pressure downstream uh, drops, uh, high velocity is being generated inside the regulator that is tripping the mechanism, pushing the valve against the orifice and closing the regulator off. Okay, so is it the velocity of the gas or a notable pressure drop below a set point that triggers that excess flow valve? It's a combination function. of the two, yes. Um, okay. Yeah. So, uh, as I said before, at 100% of nominal capacity, the under pressure shutout valve uh, will begin to trip. Uh, but also, if the pressure drops, uh, for example, if you have a regulator that is set at seven inches water column, the, the uh, trip point for the under pressure will be somewhere around three and a half uh, inches water column. Anything below that may be unsafe uh, for operation of any appliance. So we like to uh, highlight the fact that under pressure shut off in many situations is as important in terms of safety as over pressure shut off. Okay, thank you. We've got another question uh, here. It's, it reads, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, so to finish uh, the, the, my answer uh, on the FEX model, it's actually a spring that can be um, adjusted. So on the FEX model, we have actually two springs inside the uh, safety device, one for overpressure protection and another one for underpressure protection. And both can be adjusted independently. So it is in fact not an excess flow valve, but an underpressure shutoff valve that is a trip by uh, sensing downstream pressure against the spring and a diaphragm. Okay, thanks, Carlos. Uh, another question reads, do you have to bleed the upstream pressure to zero to reset the OPSO on this rig? Uh, no, you don't. In fact, when you pull on the knob for the overpressure shut off, you're actually opening a bypass and allowing pressures to equalize on both sides of the regulator uh, so that you can very easily reset the, the uh, mechanism uh, without effort. Uh, okay. This is important, particularly when you have high downstream pressure, so that uh, uh, the pressure uh, upstream pushing against the slam shot may be, uh, make it difficult for rearming. The bypass mechanism allows for pressures to equalize on both sides of the valve and 
for the mechanism to reset very uh, effort, effortlessly. Okay, another question came in. Can the FEX uh, support rotary meter installations? If so, what size is this? Yeah, so I'm, I'm not uh, as familiar maybe with uh, US uh, denominations or capacities uh, for the different uh, rotary meter models. But I would say that given that the FE100, it gives, has a capacity of 3,500 cubic feet an hour uh, for delivery pressures of inches water column, uh, I guess you can make that conversion and uh, come up with the um, meter size. Uh, in European denomination, that would be equivalent almost to, um, um, I would say, a G40, G60 meter, which uh, making the conversions. Um, so that's 35 cubic feet per cubic meter. Um, well, so what would be the equivalent on a rotary meter from a, a North American manufacturer? Would that be like a, uh, one and a half M, three M, maybe three M. One, I think so. one and a half, three. Yeah, yeah, up to a three M, I, I believe. Yes. Yeah, sounds reasonable. What is the maximum flow? Another question came in. Uh, what is the maximum flow from the token relief on the Opco version? This is a clearance issue. Okay, so it's in, this is important because the uh, relief valve is not your safety device. This is there to protect the regulator from um, nuisance strips of the optical device. Uh, you see situations sometimes in the field where maybe the regulator is sitting outside and the sun is hitting on the uh, meter set uh, for hours on end. And uh, if there's not a lot of flow in the line, uh, there may be some gas expansion that causes temporary increase in pressure. So the relief valve is there primarily to pop open temporarily and release that small overpressure to prevent uh, buildup on the house line that could, uh, you know, potentially cause the offset to trade prematurely. The relief valve capacity uh, depends on the outlet pressure. So for a seven inch water column delivery, I believe the relief valve capacity is around 17 cubic feet an hour. That's a, ma a maximum opening, of course. Thanks, Carlos. We were asked a question about supply. These are, uh, again, manufactured at the new Fiorentini plant in Wyerton, uh, West Virginia. Uh, they are stocked uh, by CR Wall and Foothills in both Cambridge and Calgary. Would you like me to add anything to that question? No, uh, no, I was able to answer that. Is there anything else, that everybody? Uh, we've we've uh, been able to get through this in a fairly quick order. Um, any other questions? I've got one here. Uh, another one just came in. Can you give more information about differential pressure for larger valves? So, yes. Uh, as we said before, we use a single orifice for each size. So clearly the capacity of the regulator is uh, quite large in terms of uh, flow of gas. Um, on, on many of the pre, uh, Pietro Fiorentini pressure regulator models, we can operate with as low as one and a half pound differential. This is important in many applications, especially when you have systems that are um, being, uh, you know, demand uh, large flows during uh, high peak uh, demand and uh, you're required for the regulator to be able to operate even at very low inlet pressures. Uh, so valence valve design allows you to operate with very large differential and very low differential, which is a key feature on all P PF uh, regulators. Um, we achieve that by eliminating any impact, any effect that the inlet pressure changes have on the operation of the regulator. So for example, I'll give you uh, a couple of uh, models uh, as a reference, the Reval and the Norval regulators, which are used in medium to low pressure. 
uh, they can operate with as low as one and a half pound differential. So inlet to outlet, the difference one and a half pounds, the regular can achieve maximum capacity. And this is key on systems, uh, especially you see it on low pressure distribution, but also on meter sets, um, where sometimes you see that the actual um, system pressure is quite close to what the delivery pressure needs to be. Uh, in low pressure systems, this is particularly significant because um, sometimes you need to have very tight pressure control. You need to uh, set your worker and the monitor as close as possible so that you don't exceed MAOP. But at the same time, you want to achieve maximum capacity with very low differential. So this is one of those key factors that was mentioned earlier that I think it's important in our design and that as a result of the balance valve design, which allows us to use an orifice that is basically the same size as the flange size. So on a two inch flange, we, our orifice is um, in essence a two inch orifice. Thank you. There was a, a second part to that question that came as well. How low is low? Uh, the author writes for a four inch regulator at 600 ANSI and 150 PSIG outlet pressure, how low can the inlet pressure be? Okay, that's, that's a good question. So for very high pressure, uh, there will be typically a pilot operated regulator. The minimum differential to operate, it's a little bit uh, higher than maybe for a spring operated regulator like NORA. Uh, on high pressures, we, we can comment, for example, on a reflux, uh, three PSI, so that is required to start to stroke the valve open, and seven and a quarter pounds to strike the valve completely open. So on, on that type of regulator, even with as low as seven and a quarter pound differential, you can operate at full capacity. Another question, uh, these operate when completely flooded. Is this appropriate for installation within the floodplain when there could be a longer term flood event? Yes, so uh, this is a, a concept that uh, has been around for a long time and it's extensively used in many countries. Um, uh, Federico can attest to some of these locations. Uh, I know of some uh, here in North America. Um, Yes, yeah, so it is not meant to be operating 100% of the time uh, submerged underwater. Depending on the water column, of course, there'll be some impact on your delivery pressure. But let's say that um, in general, we can talk about days or weeks of operating underwater without any uh, concern. Okay, thank you. Another question, an earlier slide stated the relief valve max rate is 0.86 CFH, and in Q&A, 17 CFH was stated. Please clarify. Okay, so um, the relief valve is meant to be operating in case of uh, temporary increase in pressure. So again, something that in the industry some people refer to it as sun gas, which is a thermal expansion of the gas inside the diaphragm case or in the house line or in the meter that causes a slight increase in pressure. So the relief valve will be set below the opco device and will take care of those you know, sudden increases in pressure uh, by releasing very, very small amount of gas. So even though the, the flow rate a, a full opening can be as high as 17 cubic feet an hour. The concept is that the relief valve will not open for more than maybe a couple of seconds, maybe even less than that, because the amount of gas that it needs to be uh, releasing to atmosphere to reduce the overpressure is not very large. On the other hand, when you have a diaphragm failure, of course, you have no ability to close the regulator. So, the tendency is for the inlet pressure to go downstream. And at that point, you don't want gas to be going through outside, uh, through the vent. And that's why the diaphragm, K, the, sorry, the, the, uh, the safety diaphragm is installed to contain, contain pressure inside the diaphragm case. So the di safety diaphragm has a very small pin size hole that allows the leak 
leak of gas to outside to be less than one cubic foot an hour. In fact, the higher the pressure, the less the leak. Uh, I know this may be a little bit difficult to comprehend, but we've done extensive testing, even with uh, a testing of CSA to determine what that leak rate is, and it's always below one cubic foot an hour. So that's what the safety diaphragm allows. And that's only in case of catastrophic failure, where the main or working diaphragm has failed and is no longer able to control the uh, closing member on the regulator to prevent an overpressure event. Thank you. Another question uh, reads, what was the minimum you could have on the system pressure and still get full flow on the FE? All right, so that depends on the, uh, on the uh, regulator model. For the 25 is four PSI. So what we're basically saying is that from four PSI all the way up to 125 PSI, we guarantee the nominal flow rate capacity, which is 875 cubic feet an hour. For the FE50 model, it's a little larger than that. And I think it runs at a, a seven PSI. For the FE100 model, it's 10 PSI. So depending on what your flow rate is, uh, nom nominal wise for, for each model, uh, the minimum pressure to operate the regulator may be different. But it ranges from four PSI to 10 PSI for the largest model. Uh, that, does, that does not mean that the regulator will not start flowing gas with less than that. It's just that the flow rate capacity is going to be less than nominal. Okay. Thank you. Another question reads, can you change the inlet and outlet orientation in the field or does it need to be inbuilt from the uh, factory? Um, we do prefer to make those configurations for the customer. Um, the way that uh, the regular connections are installed does not allow for removal and repositioning of the uh, inlet. So, and that's because here, of the sealant and adhesive that's used in the process, is that correct? That's correct. So we use a very high strength a Loctite uh, um, adhesive that basically has similar strength to, to, to welding. So it is, uh, in essence, impossible to remove the uh, connection after it's been installed in the factory. Right, and just and, and it's interesting that question because we were actually discussing this yesterday. Uh, but uh, the the intent is to have uh, regulators on site in Calgary and Cambridge that uh, have no plugs on board that uh, could be adapted very very quickly to uh, to immediate needs. Yes, that's always a possibility. Is uh, for us to supply a regulator with the openings and for you to configure it in whichever way the customer requires. And yep. those openings that, do not, that are not being used can be plugged also with uh, components that are, are supplied by, by us. Right, and we would have to do a leak and set point test after fixing the plugs. Correct. Correct. Um, question reads, how does the single orifice operate? Well, so here's the, uh, the difference, right? Uh, I, I believe that if you're sizing a regulator, maybe a, a full IRV, full internal relief valve type regulator, you need to look at what your capacity needs to be to match the meter or the uh, uh, demand from that customer and um, the inlet pressure. And that will give you the size orifice that you, you need to install. A problem sometimes with that is that uh, the larger the orifice, the less, the lower the, the inlet pressure rating. So for example, on larger orifices, maybe your regulator may be rated to a maximum of 40 pounds. If you use a much smaller orifice, you can go as high as 100, even more on the inlet side. For us, because we're doing a two-stage pressure cut, we don't care what the uh, inlet pressure is. We can use a size orifice as large as we like to match the, the nominal capacity of the regulator. The first stage is gonna be doing the rough pressure cut and delivering just a few pounds above uh, outlet pressure to the second stage. So you're in fact not required to size down the orifice to match the maximum inlet pressure 
And that's how you can get much larger capacities out of a larger orifice while still being able to use a regulator up to the largest uh, pressure rating. Does that answer the question? I uh, will have to default. I, it did for me, but. Yes. Okay, it looks like uh, it, before we wrap up, uh, if there's any last questions, I think we, uh, we have been asked and answered. Uh, so with that, I would like to uh, thank everyone again for, for attending. I hope this has been, been uh, helpful and valuable and a good use of your, uh, your, your time. Uh, thank you to our uh, co-hosts as well for Fiorentini and Carlos. Uh, well done. Uh, with that, I think uh, we can give you back part of your day. And so thank you all.